important in, in, in directing the workshop itself. And there are so many layers of difference, and I think when you stop noticing them, then it becomes, it becomes really easy to connect to people. I think we also started to kind of criticize this, this, this thing with um, um, with uh, like that we have to represent a country somehow and yeah. we try to like get over it or just like um, kind of this nationalism thinking to, to like yeah talk more about the circumstances of but our writing in general. But still the topic was the people. You had to write about the people. What was the, the concept of uh, le peuple or a uh, sharp or the people when you came to writing did you did you discuss this a lot <laughs> did he come up with anything I, no nothing definite i mean you can't really come up with anything definite i mean because it's like arian said it's also something very personal and i think that this is something that we that we gathered out of the workshop that at the end of the day, each each of us has their own perception of what democracy is. I mean, I personally never even think of what dem I never asked myself the question until until I was in the workshop and I was suddenly looking at like meanings of it. And I, I never thought of Switzerland as a democracy, and I never thought of Ariana Swiss. So, and I also never like I went to Turkey, and I never went to I never thought of. Turkey being like a democracy that went into like not being a democracy, but a semi is just semi, and that was that was that is weird also when you when you put it in the context of the title of the workshop, I think, because on one level the people are us, and that is also a level that you can look at, and the people are also who you determine them to be in very specific historical and emotional moments. And but then also, when, whenever there's an election, especially in countries like Egypt, Turkey, and uh, in Switzerland, or when you had the, the, the public poll for, for example, the Brexit, you go like, hopefully, the people, them, they don't fuck us over, right? And, and um, whenever there's an election in, in, in Turkey, and you get like 52% against 48%, or when you get elections in Egypt, they go like, <laughs> It's nice that you waste our paper, but we're going to do whatever we like anyways. Or when you have elections in Switzerland that are against um, or that are for a, a fixed level of migration coming to the country, you go like, please, 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 the people um, don't fuck us over. So you have to have this, this correlation. Was there ever a point when you thought about this, especially when we talk about uh, Turkey and Egypt? I think it's, very, it's a very important point to think about the people. Same. Thank you. 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 Um, as we work together and we saw that we are, uh, for me at least, it, it, uh, I saw that we didn't, we were not really different. We were coming from different countries, but we were not uh, that different. <coughs> and the, 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 the writings or the, the text that we wrote, that they were look, look they were, looks like each other, or like we were also talking the, the life, and then it, it, it was also, we, we were kind of living the same life, and uh, it was really similar for me. When we, when we work on, on people, uh, I just feel, feel felt like, I was just um, taking around, uh, just walking around the uh, Aryans or, or Zeynep's decoration. I, I felt like I'm on on their decoration no? or, or on their play. Yeah. I'm 
enteresan oldu yani kendi bakışım çok değişti. Hem de e, oradan kendi dekorum var, kendi hayatım bu kendi bakışım. And 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 I I also discover myself as a new person being in that decoration or in that place. And what was I was I saying? And and it it's also changed my point of view to the, to my country, because I really saw that how they see my country from outside. What has changed? They changed. Uh, <laughs> 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 Uh, in in professional life, also personal life, I saw that I'm a little bit close looking to the um, to, to looking to my country. I think I opened up a little bit after this uh, process. And actually, I'm also really impressed Aryan's uh, poetical uh, writing style and I started to thought about different ways of writing for myself. <laughs> and for, for Zeynep it's, it's, uh, it, it was interesting to see how ironically she writes and also I could also use it in, in that way. And it's, it, it was a collective work and it's it's changed or it affect my my work and it's all it wasn't a, just a work or a workshop or something it was also um, something really emotional for me there there is parts um there is parts in Ariane's and Sammy's uh, play that sort of uh, reappear where you had this bunch of work that reappeared can you explain why you used them to Together, or why they appear in both in both pieces? Yeah, maybe it has something to do with our like that we as a as a group, as a um, Swiss theatre group, decided actually to work with with the with protest songs to 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 take this topic as a maybe f form of a connect a, a form to connect these these texts, and then we really. Yeah, try to to look. Yeah, what texts have like the yeah the facilities to to make songs out of it, or to to make like a, a yeah a narrative thing out of it with music. To, yeah, together with music actually. And um, yeah. It reminded me in parts of Bertolt Brecht, who always, in his style of writing, was very musical, but who also wrote songs and, and, and uh, had a very musical approach to his, to his theatre work. But then on the other hand, it was very often very bluntly political. He never was shy of giving opportunities and also of giving possible ways out of the misery that he was in in the 1920s and then in the 30s. Why did you avoid this in, in uh, a play that had to do with the people and the, 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 the momentum we're in right now? Yeah, I'm not sure if we wanted to avoid it. Maybe it was more like that we tried to, to, to show this, I don't know, this, this outside of you that Switzerland has somehow, or this this long tradition of neutrality somehow. This also this um, yeah this this spectator view. This not 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 really doing something, just looking, just like keep observing, you out, yeah, yes. observing. And um, maybe also with with a little bit, we had the thought, okay, maybe, but. There is also something like a protest in sitting and just saying no. Where is the potential of, of protest in this in this not moving in this paralyzed situation somehow? Because also I remember that right after the revolution in Egypt, you had masses of cultural productions that were that were less artistic than they were um, in a way 
sort of tainted still by this activism that was around. And I spoke to a friend uh, from Cairo who said, back then, this will not last. Like these pieces of arts created in, in the midst of a revolution, they will not last. They will die because they are, they are poor of content. Then would you agree with this? So if you have, for example, a song um, praising the, the, the shab and, and, and uh, the different themes, shab is the, the Arabic word for the people um, that came up by then, do you still listen to them? Are they still there? Or are they, from an artistical point of view, gone and flat? Were they naive, even? That's such a difficult question. I mean, what determines that art will remain and who determines that this is good art? That's, I think that's also like the question we all ask when we make art and when we watch it. Um, well, it's such a difficult question, actually. I, I, I disagree with that because, because I think that, that whatever comes out in the moment comes out. And I mean, as artists, people create so many things and they're definitely affected by whatever is happening around them. And I think it, that, that art is an impulse. And, and, and things were very blurry in 2011, especially specifically that year and the two years that followed. Um, because also, and I mean blurry between between what what was what people decided to call was art, and what um, what people thought of as just personal expression, and I think that this blurriness is is really what art is. It it is it is a personal expression, and I think that that the, that. If you look at the art scene in Egypt now, I mean, it is also a reflection of what is happening. It is also not just a reflection of what is happening, but it's also, it's this impulse. How does, how does your impulse work in, in times like these? And, and I think also, I'm, I'm really not joking, but I really also think, how does memory work? Because now, like, when we think, I'm, not, I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not being like, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm serious, like, what, what do we remember of 2011? I mean, it's, it is, it's very also, it's very difficult to also pigeonhole artists and for them to do this to, them, to themselves by saying that we have come to be part of this revolution. It has happened. There were people who were called, like, the singer of the revolution or the like spe specifically like performing arts like that were very catchy with like crowds um, and that now like people think are not um, are not creating art that is worthy um, but then on the other hand there are others who think that back then they were creating something that was very feasible that was very tangible and that the people if we if we're talking about crowds protesting, could actually relate to. So I really think it's a difficult question, but I really understand your friend's point of view. I, I understand where it's coming from, and I understand that, um, that, that it is one way of looking at things, that if you create things out of a certain moment and that they don't build up on something, they don't go anywhere. Um, and perhaps, Perhaps, like when you look at the following years, people were still trying to keep up the same spirit of creating art in the same mood. I think, but it was very difficult. And now, and now I think even audiences they don't want to hear this. And I also don't know if people creating art think about these things. I'm sure they do, but um, there are also things like censorship and other matters that people also think about. I mean. I'm not sure if I answered your question, but... If we, if we speak of censorship, for example, or freedom of arts in creating uh, a refuge... No, it was working. Um, if we speak of censorship and uh, creating sort of um, spaces where arts can do whatever they want, um, we recently heard of Turkey and of the, the permanent arrests of uh, critical minds, of people who work in universities, of people who work in theatres. Um, was that 
or is that a thought that is in your mind that maybe you will have to sort of um, also have to deal with these issues when you're back in Turkey, when you show your plays in the countries you come from? It's a hard question, again. <laughs> I will, I can, I can answer. I will, well, I will know this when I get arrested. He says. I don't know. I, I don't know what's uh, what's the danger. I don't know how, for what they could arrest, arrest me. So I don't know actually what I'm doing good or bad or wrong. So uh, it's not it's not clear for me. Uh, I write. I wrote a play called uh, uh, Abdulhamid Dönemi, which is the, the last um, imperator of the Ottoman Imperator. As the last uh, imperator, uh, Ottoman emperor, em mm. emperor, the Sultan, the last one. About him, no? It said yeah. about him. And uh, they didn't. Uh, they, they asked. Uh, theater asked for uh, for this play, and then they just stopped the project. And I got a, um, I, a, a professor of mine, and his, a history professor of mine, he's, he just said to me, it, it, it was really good for you that they just stopped the project. Okay. Um, uh, because most of the people in Turkey, they still see up to limit as a sultan, and uh, but he was. I, I was touching the the moments that it's it's more dictatorship, and then it's it's his uh, problematic uh, uh, regime. Mm -hmm. and, and I have I have another um, uh, play, which is what was in, in English, is in German. What was that? Dishpur, uh, and it also has a lot of political um, points, and it's uh, and and it, it, uh, we showed that, and there's that it does it didn't happen it didn't happen anything in, in since three years, so. <laughs> Such wood <advice. laughs> So I don't know I don't know how to answer, uh, answer and it's. In parts, your play was political when you said, hey, we have enough genocide to be part of the EU. Um, <laughs> when, when, we speak, <laughs> when we speak of, um, of Switzerland, how can you sort of shake up your audience and the people who support a populist party, which is really huge, the SVP? Um, don't know if you heard of them, they're sort of the blueprint of, of other right-wing uh, parties we have all over Europe. How do you still shake them up? Is that an intention you have? Or is it just, no, no, I just want to do arts. Leave me alone with politics. Yeah, it's, it's a good question how to like, shake them up. I think that's, that's kind of that what I try to thematize with, with this, this show tonight, because <laughs> Yeah, a good example is actually the, the, this, um, this initiative, Masseneinwanderungsinitiative, um, of uh, 2009, where everyone was like thinking, okay, it's it's as a, it's an initiative um, that from the 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 SVP, from the conservative uh, right party. Um, to, to limit migration to to or yeah immigration somehow and um, very blurry initiative kind of more like just yeah like the the 
more like a title, more like a slogan, where you like vote against or for it. And everyone is like thinking, no, that's, it's, it can't happen. So, and then it happened, and um, the people <laughs> vote for it, kind of. And um, there are still discussions how to like, to, to make it now, it's not, yeah. Um, but that's maybe a good example to, to, yeah, that there were like not enough like um, uh, things have been done to shake shake them up actually. And now we had this last year this this um, Durchsetzungsinitiative. Yeah, it's it's another <laughs> initiative of the of this party and. Then there was something happening. You saw there were like a lot of artists and some writers that, who did actually something against it. It was like it, it needed kind of this initiative before to to shake to shake the people up to 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 really um, yeah do something and and say the opinion in public somehow. Yeah. I would like to open uh, it for questions now, but I have one, one last question. When we speak of reclaiming democracy, um, and once again, I have to touch upon Egypt, which had, I think, more elections than Switzerland and Germany combined in the last five years. Um, there was on the Constitution, there were a couple of uh, votes on uh, the presidency, there were a couple of votes on the parliament and so forth, is reclaiming democracy, and, and well, it always uh, sort of agreed to the will of the people, as we hear very often in, uh, in the Egyptian news, but then is reclaiming democracy in a state like Egypt also reclaiming your own private space and your own private memories and things you care about in your private life? Is that also uh, a democratic way of living for yourself, Senna? I think to reclaim something, you actually have to have it. And that's the problem when you think of reclaiming democracy in Egypt. It's, it's just the wrong context. I, it is the wrong context. I mean, and I'm talking about democracy the way that, that we've finally come to define it in the workshop. Um, that it's the, like what the, what the people want. And like from what is happening, from the way you, you realize, um, especially in the time that we live in, where there is so much personal archive going on that you, there's so much um, to do when you think of archive. There, is, there are videos and there is the internet and there are all these ways to create historical archives. And, and when you think of how, like officially, the times we live in are being written out. And then you just try to think that there are so many possibilities of what had really happened every time there had been a claim that there was a democratic, that the people have democratically, democratically chosen this or that or, and, and I think like, we, and I really personally never think of the word democracy because, because I, the first time I actually thought about it was in 2011 when we were, when uh, uh, the head of this, like the Egyptian intelligence said to this American interviewer, but the Egyptian people are, um, are ready for democracy, but when? And, and it became a joke, but then it, it's not just a joke, it's really, it's really this question of like, do you really agree to what people choose? Because then when you think of yourself as a person living in a society, in a community, and you're either like with us or against us, and then the way like nations are built, the way societies are built, it's all about what we want, but that is impossible. We're, we're so many people and we're so different. and. And, and people choose according to their priorities. Like, very simply, it is really about priorities. And, and I think that this is what, like, we learn that um, when we suddenly had all these elections happening, you, 
you imagine that people's conception of right and wrong is very similar to what you believe, but then you suddenly realize that, whoa, <laughs> what the, what? <laughs> and and it's, it's not that these people are like wrong to think that way. It's just also a realization that, that who are they? And, and what does they mean? And, and who is this ambiguous body of, of, of people that we determine are the people? Because like the state determines that the people are those who go like, yes, we are for the state, but then the people who are not for this are definitely certain that they are the people and, and it just it goes on and on. And, and of course it's related to public space, like private space. It, it, is about, it is about knowing and feeling that you're safe. So many of my friends have left the country the past year and, and, uh, and people just don't feel safe. And, and I think that we don't even realize that. It's, it's, not, it's not like you're in like, danger at the moment, like that it's going to happen to you right now. It's a very kind of, it's a very different kind of danger than, for example, my father imagined would happen in 2011 when he decided that I shouldn't go and protest. Because you, you suddenly feel that you don't want to connect with your neighbors and with, with certain people that are out of your comfort zone. And, and when I think of these things, I honestly don't think of democracy. I just, I just think that this is probably what we all want. It's, it's what, um, what I think Aryan and Sami ex, um, experience, but on very different levels because they come, in, they come from very different places and very different communities. But then it's not because they also come from democracies, but it's just, um, it's just a different perception of what, it's also a question that maybe we should think about and I think that one that we've also thought about a lot during the workshop and to what extent is democracy really what we want? And I never think of, of, of the moment, I never think of the people of like, like the times when I was really angry in a, in a march or, I also felt very safe. I, I knew that I was not in danger, for instance, but I was extremely angry and I never felt that I was walking, doing this, holding this piece of paper because I wanted democracy. It's, it's, it's also, it's something that's much deeper than that. You feel that you want justice and, and justice is also a very big word, but once you start using these big words, they also, they also come to stand for different things that I think we as people, very different people, don't really have a solid definition of. Thank you. I would like to open it for questions now. I can hardly see you. Do this. Do this, I'll do this. Questions. Questions, questions. Oh, come on. No one? Well, I can go on all night long. It's not a problem, you know? Like, the, the sooner you raise your hand, the quicker you can go for a beer. Okay. The people demand beer. A sharp you read. Um, always. Always? Well, then, I would like to thank you. I'd like to thank you for, first of all, showing us um, what you made of this huge amount of text that you gathered together and for coming up after your performance uh, when you're supposed to have drinks. Um, I would like to thank you for coming up. It was um, the fourth or fifth um, talk we had. Tomorrow we'll continue talking with two directors, one from Hungary and one from Croatia. It's also going to be about um, democracy and the right wing, the rise of the right wing. And um, yeah, we'll just hang out. If you have any questions you don't want to ask in public, <laughs> they are still here as private person. Thank you so much for coming. Thank See you, you tomorrow. Time.